guys welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before my name is Shalina Battles I am in the author of three books Soul Jumper a paranormal romance The Man Before You which is a contemporary romance and Encampment which is a young adult fantasy this video was actually supposed to be up yesterday but I've been having so much trouble with Premiere Pro. I've always used Adobe products. Um, I got into them back in college um, in my undergrad because I minored in photography and one of my majors was journalism and that's what they used. And so I was trained on Lightroom and um, Premiere Pro and, you know, Adobe products. So it's always been what I've been comfortable using. But here lately, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if <laughs> it's actually Adobe, if it's my clips, my memory card, my computer, I don't know. But for whatever reason, I'm having a heck of a time getting stuff to export. Um, the editing process goes fine, everything up to exporting, and then it's like, Nope, we're not going to do it. Um, so it'll load, it'll get all the way to like 100% and it'll just stop. It never actually finishes the process. And so this has happened a couple of times. I had a video I wanted to post about all of the stuff I was going to put in the signed copies of Encampment. That video got all messed up, partially. Um because of exporting but partially part of those clips were my fault because they got deleted so that was a mess um this video yesterday I had a vlog that I recorded for last week that never got posted because of exporting so it's been a time it's been a time but anyways let's jump into this um I wanted to talk yesterday but we're gonna talk today about some things I wish I would have known when I published Soul Jumper. And so I know that a lot of people, if you're just starting out, um, or even if you've been in this a long time, there's always stuff you learn along the way. And I really do believe that the best thing we can do as indie authors is support other indie authors. And so I wanted to throw out some things I wish I would have known before I started this process. Things I've learned from book one to book three, um, and I'm sure this is something I'll do again because there's always more to learn and the process is ever changing and the market's changing and all of those things that come into play. You learn new software, um, myself maybe learning some new editing software here really quick, and so things like that that come up. But these are kind of like my top things that I really did notice from encampment to or i'm sorry from soul jumper to encampment um the first of those things is editing takes time it takes a lot of time and that sounds obvious but it's 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 really not um for a few reasons and so i feel like most writers know like yes editing is a process and it's tedious and whatever but what I didn't realize was the planning and like the deadlines that go into editing. And when you're an indie author, you're giving yourself those deadlines. So for me, I am a huge procrastinator, huge procrastinator. I will wait until the last minute to do something. Um, and so I have really struggled with giving myself deadlines because I am the type of person where if I give myself too much time, it's really not to my benefit because I won't use any of the time until right at the end and then I'm scrambling. Um, but then if I give myself like a very short window, that's better for me personally. Um, but it may not work out for, you know, an editor or a beta reader or whatever. So you also have these other players that you have to consider. Um, with Encampment, I gave myself two weeks when my editor gave it back to me, two weeks to get it done. 
And that should have been enough time, but it wasn't, but not because it wasn't enough time. It wasn't enough time because I'm a procrastinator. And so had I been doing that every day for two weeks, um, it would have been fine. But I waited till the last like two or three days and then I'm scrambling to try to get that done. The other thing that I do is when I get stuff back from my editor, I will scan through it and read her comments and be like, oh, that's not a big deal. <laughs> it's fine. Like this is not going to take a long time. So I really underestimate the time stuff is going to take because you may see a comment that's like, you know, I'm not loving this sentence or um, this doesn't make sense to me or, hey, they're sitting, but, you know, a paragraph ago they were walking around. When did they sit? Little things like that where you're like, that'll take no time at all. But when you sit down to actually rework those sentences, um, when you have a sentence where you use the same word two or three times and now you're trying to find replacements for those words, Stuff that when you look at it doesn't seem like it's going to take a lot of time. Time where you think they're not going to. But whenever you're sitting down and you're looking at your screen and you're going in and making those edits, they end up being more tedious oftentimes than you think they're going to be. Um, and sometimes, you know, moving one thing or changing one sentence and now you're scrolling back up to see okay does this still flow and it's it's just a time consuming process um so with that i'd say if if you're just getting into this or even if you've been in it a long time stick to your deadlines stick to your deadlines um it's hard if you're a procrastinator and you've been that way your whole life to kind of change that about yourself but know that about yourself be honest with yourself about it and then do things that work for you I know when I give myself shorter deadlines when it's possible you know if it's just me and I know like okay my editor gave this back I want to have this on Amazon on this day I'm giving myself you know a week to do this um that works a lot better for me than if I give myself like a month because I just won't use the time and I know that about myself. I won't use any of that time except the last, you know, few days. And so for me personally, giving myself shorter deadlines is what works for me when it comes to editing. Also, sticking to your deadlines because it's not just your own deadlines. <laughs> um, Amazon has their own rules and so once you pick a publication date on Amazon they will tell you as soon as you put that date in and save it um, you have to have your manuscript uploaded by this day and so you have to have it by that day and if you don't they will take privileges away from you like being able to open pre-orders for a year um, and different things like that thankfully that's never happened to me but I've come really close, really close. And so there's no wiggle room there. It's not like, oh, I can have it up, you know, the next day. No, Amazon is like this day. The other thing is time changes. I think I've mentioned this before with Amazon. Um, that's the deadline I almost missed because I was, I'm like a few hours behind them so it was already midnight or whatever that day with them um where they're located and it wasn't for me so you're going off amazon time amazon deadlines for uploads so don't pick a publication date until you're a hundred percent sure that's the day that you're publishing because amazon is very strict about that um and i learned with Soul Jumper, I think it was Soul Jumper, might have been the man before you, um, to A, not put a date in until you're like, yep, 110%, this is the day I'm publishing, and B, to have your book uploaded three to four days before that. Amazon says it could take up to 72 hours for your book to upload. I've never had a book take that long. Um, usually they're up like within a few hours. 
But the point is they can take 72 hours. And so if you are uploading your book the night before your release day or the morning of your release day, you're um, probably not going to see it that day or at least not right away. It's not like you hit publish and it's bam, it's there. No, it does go under review um, and it'll take a little bit. And so I would just give yourself that 72 hour window. No, like, hey, if I want to publish this day, I need to upload, you know, three, four days before that. And like I said, Amazon will tell you what date you have to have it up by. Um, but then give yourself additional wiggle room. The other thing that I want to talk about is doing the math. Uh, I hate math. <laughs> it's not my subject. I'm sure there's some people, even writers, that love it. But I've never had a numbers mindset. I do not think of things in terms of numbers at all. I have a very creative brain. I have a very um, chaotic mind. ADHD to the max. And I care about things like what my cover looks like and my signed copy packages and picking out freebies and the creative end of this business. That's what I like. Designing promotional images. Um, things like that. I have no interest in the business end of this thing. But I have to because it is a business. <laughs> and, and so that's been a real struggle for me. And if you're not a math person... It may be a struggle for you too, but you have to keep track of it. It's really important, A, for yourself to know what money are you spending, where's your money going, but then also what money are you bringing in, um, what are your profits, are you making a profit, are you breaking even, and with Soul Jumper, I didn't really track it that hard, um, but then taxes rolled around and I was like, oh, Okay, now I have to find all this stuff, scrolling through emails to find things that I purchased, um, you know, going back and checking all of my places where I get income from, and so trying to compile all of that. And it took a lot more time than it should have. So with the next two books, and especially with Encampment, I feel like with Encampment I've been a lot stricter on keeping track of that stuff. And so... What I do is, I keep this thumbtack to my board. It's just an envelope. Um, obviously, I change it out with the new year, but it's full of receipts. So anything I spend money on for my business, I pay for shipping um, or I whatever I do buy stuff for freebies if I um you know purchase something that has to do with my business I put it in there I get a copy of the receipt and so that helps keep track of those because they do want um records when you go to do taxes you can tell them like hey I spent this much money like the total um but they're gonna want to actually see where that money went and so get copied receipts of stuff i have a folder in my email that's just that just says um chaos publishing and design you know 2021 taxes or whatever and i put when i buy something and i get an online receipt i put it in there so that i have all of my digital receipts i have my actual hard copy receipts and that makes that part of it a lot easier the other thing I do is I keep a folder um, and I don't really keep much in here it's just right now I just have a check in there I know I have another one coming soon in the mail so if I get money from a source that's not digital if it's not Amazon if it's not Venmo PayPal Ingram spark drop to digital whatever it's not coming in digitally I put it in here and so then I know, okay, I had that money come from somewhere. Here's my record of that. Um, and I'll write on there, you know, what day I deposited that money and everything like that. The other thing I would recommend is you can go to H&R Block and 
get a business records book. I do not write in mine, but I love having it as a reference because it kind of breaks everything down for you really well. Let me see. It wants to... So it breaks everything down for you really well. It talks about, you know, the date, what money you got, cash or ch credit, um, you know, any expenses, any equipment, all of that good stuff. And so it kind of really breaks that down for you. Like I said, I don't write in mine, um, but I do like to have it as a reference. It has a receipt envelope in the front if you wanted to write in yours. They will give you one of these at h and Block. You don't have to pay for it. They'll give you one every year. Um, so, I mean, I could write in this. Um, I just haven't. The other cool thing is it gives you stuff in the back um, that you can also write off on taxes. And so your utilities, your gas, your water, your electric, um, your phone, your internet, and kind of how that breaks down with your business, your rent or your mortgage. I have a home office. This is the only thing I use my office for. And so they base it off of the square footage of your office and um, your mortgage and they figure that out and you can write that part off on taxes. Um, you know, gas, like in your vehicle, if you're going to do something like mail packages, um, I don't know how it is in every other state, but here it's like 58 cents a mile or something like that. Um, so if you keep receipts from that, you can kind of figure that out and do that as well. There is a whole list of stuff that I had no idea about that I can write off on taxes. And so, um house stuff specifically but she told me all of that at H&R Block so I really recommend you know getting a consultation talking to somebody who can kind of help you if you don't have that math brain um and then obviously anything else you spend money on and so you know I bought vellum software um we pay for wi-fi I pay an editor um you know the stuff I buy for giveaways or the freebies I stick in with the signed copies. Um, Bluehost is who hosts my website. That costs money. If you do any book tours with your stuff, um, you know, I pay for Canva. I pay for Adobe software. I pay for a lot of things. It's a long list. Um, so just make sure that somewhere you're keeping track of that um, and writing it down every single time you purchase something business related. I keep this instead of writing in the H&R Block book. It's just a composition notebook. And I just basically put what's in the H&R Block book, but I put it in here. So the date, um, what I paid with, if it was, you know, I have a business card specifically for my business. Was it that or did that money come from somewhere else? Um, what I purchased, how much it cost, and I do not color code hardly anything, <laughs> but I do color code this. So if it's money I'm spending, it's in blue. If it's money I'm receiving, it's in red, so that when I go to give her a total, it's really easy to say, here's my money out, here's my money in. Um, she'll still want to see proof of all of this, but it's just a really quick way to A, have a total amount of both things and then B, know, okay, I need to go and what I need receipts for, which they'll either be on my laptop or in that envelope that I keep up here. So really easy to gather that stuff when it's tax season. Do the math. <laughs> um, and also for profit purposes because I, I was terrible with this at Soul Jumper. I was okay with the man before you. I was a lot more nitpicky with encampment so when you're going to price your books I mean it's obvious to a lot of people but to me like I just didn't think that much into it and it's again because of the way my brain works but 
you know, look at all those things. What is it going to cost to print your book when somebody orders it as a paperback? Amazon will tell you as soon as you put it put it in um, how much printing cost is going to be. And, you know, sign copies. Okay, if you're throwing in stuff like I do, pens or whatever, um, that's an expense on your part. So really looking at, okay, to publish this book, what is it costing me per book? Um, look at what you spent on edits and things like that. And use that to kind of gauge your pricing. Um, because it's really easy to get like wrapped up in the immediate like, oh, I sold this many signed copies for this amount of money. Yes, this is how much I made. It's like, that's really not how much you made. <laughs> if you break it down, um, you know, what is your actual profit? Did you make a profit? Um, and things like that. And on Amazon, it's way easy because they show you um, you know, how much you sold and they already are taking out things like printing and stuff like that. And so you do see the money you're actually going to make. Um, but for anything you're selling on your own, make sure you're keeping good track of that. Okay. The other thing I wanted to talk about was ask people to help promote you. Ask them to promote you. I didn't really do this with Soul Jumper. And I wish I would have. I had a lot of people support me with Soul Jumper, uh, post the cover, promote it on release day, and that was great. But I've noticed that when I ask, I get a lot more support, which is awesome. And I've also recognized that people want to support you. A lot of times they just don't know how or like what to do. And so it's perfectly fine to say, Hey, I'm, you know, releasing this book on this day. If I send you promotional images, would you share them on your social media? Sometimes I'll do like a general, just a post on Facebook or Instagram and people will respond to that. Sometimes I'll reach out to people and, um, you know, send them a message and say, Hey, would you like to help me do this? And that's perfectly fine. A lot of times they're not only willing to say yes, they're excited. They're excited to be a part of a book release. They're excited to share promotional images. Um, and I I've, I've really have realized that a lot of people would have been doing it from the beginning had they known what, what are we supposed to do? You know, <laughs> how are we supposed to help you? And so even people you don't know well that are just acquaintances or you follow them on social media, um, don't feel bad post those things, ask those questions. The worst that's going to happen is they're either going to not answer or say no. Uh, but in my experience, you'll have a lot more people saying yes. And even if you have people that say yes, but then the day of don't actually post anything, that's okay. Um, you're still, you know, making those connections. And for everybody that does post it, that helps you. And so just don't be shy about that. Be okay with, hey, will you post this for me? Um, and also doing those, you know, more general posts on Facebook, like, Hey, this is happening. Anybody that wants to help me reach out. Um, I get a lot of comments and messages that way. So utilize social media as much as you can to help promote your book. Um, the other thing, I think the last thing I wanted to talk about and I'm kind of bummed because the first time I recorded this video, I feel like it was better. <laughs> and it's just not going to export. And so uh, hopefully this one is okay. But is that things are going to go wrong. And this was in the last video, but it's even more apparent now <laughs> because of everything that's gone wrong lately. But things are going to happen. Things are going to happen. And... You can do everything in your power to stop certain things from happening, but there are things that are going to come up that are out of your control. You can't do anything about them. Like me not having internet, that was something I could do nothing about. And then there's things that are your fault, that are 100% your fault. But even after they happen, all you can do is move on. It's like, okay, it happened. What's my next step? Um, with Soul Jumper. I don't know what I did when I uploaded Soul Jumper, but I got the dates wrong somewhere. 
and people had copies of Soul Jumper before the release date. So before I ever even saw the book. And I was so, so upset about that. It was my first book. I was like, this is horrible. <laughs> um, but looking back on it now, it's like, okay, it happened. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm not going to beat myself up over it. And I'll try to do better with the next book. Um, you know, typos and errors. You have yourself looking at this book and beta readers and an editor. And you do everything in your power to avoid those. And somehow some of them still sneak in there. And you'll have books with stuff like that there. Um, you know, all this YouTube stuff that's been going on. It's been a hot mess. Like, I've been so focused on sticking to a consistent schedule and now I'm like the universe is working against me <laughs> like I've been so good about okay I need to record I need to have stuff up on YouTube on these days like really sticking to a schedule um and I've been pretty proud of myself for that but then these other things happen and I'm like hey like let me have this one <laughs> um, and so things like that were you just got to move forward. You just got to keep moving forward. Don't beat yourself up. Learn for the, for the next book and do better for the next book. And just recognize that things will go wrong. Things are going to go wrong and it'll be okay. It's going to be okay. It's still going to work out. You're still going to put out a great book. Um, so just don't be too hard on yourself. With that in mind, remember to love yourself. Remember to believe in yourself. I would love to hear things you've learned as you've been on this journey. If you are a writer, regardless of if you published or not yet, uh, what have you learned? What, what has really stuck out to you? I'm sure this is a video I could make again in a few more books <laughs> because you're always learning something. But like I said, as indie authors, the best thing we can do is support other indie authors. So let me know in the comments what you've learned. What are the biggest things you've learned as you've been on this journey? All right. I'm sorry that this wasn't up yesterday. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it is actually up today and you're watching it. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. Otherwise, I will see you guys on Wednesday. Have a great week.